Welcome to Ace Designs 1 to 7. I'm Yes in the car pack. You're the kings and queens. And today, what I for you guys is a Photoshop tutorial showing you how you can make this cool Black Ops 3 YouTube banner. There will be a full banner template in the description below of this one that we'll be making in the tutorial so you can see how I designed it in my own personal project file. The difficulty for this tutorial will be three out of five stars and the duration will be 40 minutes i do hope that you enjoy this tutorial all assets and downloads that will be needed for this one will be in the description below and also let me know what you thought of the video in the comments section below because i love getting back to all of you guys in my most recent video on my speed art you did amazing commenting on that video let's see if we can do the same in this one so yeah thanks so much for watching the video again Let's get again the desktop. This is where the magic happens. We're gonna get straight into this tutorial by opening up Photoshop and I'm going to show you the first step that is required. Now, before I do show you that first step, I'm going to um, chuck you a preview if you haven't already seen it or if you like to skip the intros of my videos. That is all right. This is what we're gonna be making today. I'm gonna chuck this on my second monitor so I can use that as a reference. That's a larger reference for myself and I also have a smaller preview on screen. Now, if you don't have a YouTube template, um, banner template, make sure you go down to the description below and download my own. Um, that's, that's to ensure that you'll be able to finish this um, tutorial and everything like that. But with, I'm going to try and open this one up. This is the layout and this is what you're gonna get. It's very simple. Um, for the bottom, just make it a black instead of a great. All right, so in the description below, I have a downloads link um, named assets download, and you'll need to go down there and download that um, assets one. Just give me a sec. Okay, so it's gonna be in this one and there. Okay, so yeah, in that um, link, go download that because of, that's gonna provide you with all the stocks that's needed for this tutorial so you can finish it and make this banner. Or you can simply scout your own. There is no problem in doing that. But yeah, I'm just going to be cutting off these little edges. Rectangular marquee tool. Just to provide a little preview and resize this one up. Okay. Okay, so the first step for the tutorial is to go down to the assets folder, which you've already downloaded, hopefully, and open up all these three stocks. So these three stocks will um, will be needed for this tutorial, as said before. Okay, so we're going to first of all drag this stock onto our document, and I'm going to press Control T and resize this one to a size like this. Now we could be making this into a Twitter banner, but I'm not in the mood for that. So I'm going to be doing a banner tutorial and I'm going to press Control T, resize this one, something like, something like that, all right. So then once I've done that, I'm going to um, go to filter, blur, glushing blur for this one. You could also mess around with all the other blurs, but I don't have that much experience with the other blurs, unfortunately, so I wouldn't be able to advise to you guys about that. So I'm going to do a glushing blur of 2.6 pixels and also move this one um, down so I get something like this. Okay, so then I'm going to go to my character. Now, I think I've already got a PNG. Oh, I don't. Great. Well, I'm going to show you how to make this into a PNG. Um, okay, sweet. Recording everything. So I like to use my one tool and do the tolerance around 110. Just as a guess. And just select my character in general. Something like that. Then I'm going to go to my quick selection tool. Bump up the size of it to like 400 or 200 something gonna go to the minus and just start taking away the selection and wrapping it to the corners of my character so what this allows me to do is it will just cut off the character when I um, cut and paste it onto my document 
So you have to do this because I wasn't able to find a PNG um, image of this particular soldier. So we're going to do like that and then mess around with the add quick selection tool and add in like through all the lines. So simply go within here and select everything. I like to do like a little sweep just to make sure that I'm getting all my little selections in place. And then I like to refine all my edges with the minus tool. Okay, so now I have made my selection around the character. I'm just going to simply press Control X, press Control V, just to see that I've made my um, thing correct. And as you can see, it's a very high definition photo, but that's fine. I'm going to press Control T, hold Shift, and resize this one down. Get a size like this going on. Right click and do flip horizontally. And I'm going to do probably. Like that. Okay, so now with our bottom layer, I'm going to just change the opacity. And for once, I'm going to make my bottom layer white. So when I change the opacity, it gets lighter and so on. Probably like a dark grayish. Not, not a dark, like a really something in between. Yeah, I think that's okay. Right, so with my character, I'm going to do something like that. And right click, go to the blending options of that layer and add on a drop shadow. Now for the size, we're going to pump this up to something like 40, but we're going to do a minus spread of zero, distance of zero, but the opacity is going to be lowered to probably 54. Okay, great. So what you might see in this banner is there's a lot of minute little details and unfortunately I won't be able to cover those things but I'm going to be showing you some of the aspects that you can do in this banner to make it look absolutely insane. So what we're going to do with the background image which is this one, I'm going to name this right image and the reason for that is you can see that the background changed from this to this. So what I'm going to do is press E on my keyboard for the eraser tool, bump up my size to around 200 with the hardness on zero, and I'm going to simply erase this whole size, all of this, and then go to my other background, which is going to be this one, and I'm going to drag this one onto my document. So I'm going to have it like this, press Control T because I want to get this large tree into the, um, into the scheme of things. Okay, so I'm going to go to my eraser tool now and erase the edges on those. So now it looks like it is simply transflowing from one background to the other. And we're going to get something really nice coming out of that. Okay, so then I can name this left image and right image. Now I'm going to try and keep my um, tutorials from now on very organized. If I don't, I apologize, but I want to try and make the steps very clear for you guys. Alright, so the next step for what I'm going to do is do this tech stuff because that is the majority of the hard work with this tutorial. I'm going to show you how you can make this and why is it like a little bit more complicated than it actually looks like it is. Okay, so you need to actually wrap your head around layering and what it can do to make an awesome effect. So you can see that this layer has been positioned behind the character but in front of the background image. This um, text... This word is positioned in front of the character, but also in front of the background image. So what I'm going to do is first of all make this red word and also this coming out. So I'm going to make a new layer here. Press T for my text tool. I'm going to change my text to Baybass New or Regular. Now make sure you go down to the description below because there will be a link to download the text there or the font, whatever you would like to call it. I'm going to um, change the color when I'm typing to white and I'm going to simply type in red. Okay, so I'm going to go to my character panel. If you don't have this, go to window character and this one will pop up. Now for the VA spacing, I'm going to probably make it 
75. I'm going to press Control T, resize this one up. Now make sure that don't get worried that it'll get all pixelated because we are using this as a text thing. So it'll just change the font of the text. Now I'm going to press Control T and then go to Skewer and simply skewer this one by holding Shift at one of the corners. And I'm going to skewer it very slightly. So like negative. 13 I'm going to do that and I'm pretty happy with that I'm going to press Control shift enter to finish that selection and then I have something like this with my text now the next thing to do is make a new layer and on this layer I'm going to move it behind my text layer then I'm going to zoom into the document by pressing Control plus and I'm going to press P for my pen tool now with my pen tool I'm going to make a line like this and I'm going to bring down my ruler and snap it to the bottom of the text. If you don't have your rulers or guides up, press Control R to grab them up. And I'm going to simply do selection like this, up and across, bam. Right click, make selection, press OK, and fill this one in with white. Okay, so you can see that the drop shadow affects the um, text box, so it does look like it is behind the character. Right, so I'm going to continue this text box by pressing Control T and dragging this one out, something like this. Then what I'm going to, well, I can't really do that, so because of when you can see it changes the angle of things here. So I'm going to um, just press Control J um, because I want this thickness to be exactly the same and simply shift it across, something like that. See, I'm going to be improvising when I'm making this effect. I redid it before, I didn't get the recording, so here I am making it again for you guys. So, um, there we go. Okay, I'm going to merge these two together, make a new layer, and with this layer, I'm going to simply grab up my pen tool, zoom in quite closely for this one, and make a point here, and a point there. And this one is going to go down here. And this one doesn't have to be too thick. Probably something like that. I'm going to go from this point. Oh, I can go to add point here. Okay, I'm just going to delete this path. I'm going to restart this one. Hold a shift down and... Make something like that. I'm going to go back to my pen tool. Go to the add anchor point. Go to here. Press P for my pen tool. I need to add my anchor points. Go from this point, hold shift across, and make a uh, selection like that. Make selection, press OK, and fill this one in. You can see that I did that to try and get everything like that going on. So now I'm going to press Control T, and unfortunately I made a mistake of merging those layers together, but that is OK. I can simply find this layer, delete some of it. Press Control T, um, just merge these ones. Cut that one out, paste it. Okay, move this one. So hopefully you're following me. It's really hard to explain this. Okay, so move that across. So I'm going to have something like this. Okay. Okay, so with this, um, I'm going to find this one. So this one and this one is the same, so I can merge these two together, and then I have this one. So this is going to be behind character, and this is going to be transition. Okay, so to make the switch from here to here, it's all behind this backpack. So what I'm going to do is grab up my pen tool, um, make a selection like that, make a path around that, make a selection, and then simply cut this one out. 
go to my character, make a new layer, and paste this one onto that layer. Oh, hang on. Okay, so I'm going to leave it actually like this. Okay, that is fine. And, sorry, these are really un unclear steps. Now with the transition, I'm going to go something like this. Make a straight line. Okay, and right click to make selection. And fill this one in with white. Fill that in with white. Okay, so we have something like this. And then from my transition, I'm going to go above my character layer. Character layer. And make a new layer and grab up my rectangular marquee tool. Simply do something like this. It goes from here to something relatively like here. And fill this one in with white. Now with my transition, if I control click this one, press control shift I to invert that selection. Go back to this one and press delete. Oh, actually press control shift I. Delete that one. And I can use my eraser tool to erase um, this. So if I press Control Shift I and erase that a little bit. So it's something like that to make it look accurate. Okay, so now you can see that it's actually flipping all around here. So hopefully you're still with me. Um, and yeah, so this is going to be front panel. And this one's actually going to be behind panel. Okay, so with my front panel, I'm going to press um, T for my text tool. And I'm going to do SUSE. <sighs> SUSE. Press Control shift i Press Control t Resize this one right up. To have something like this. Okay, now I didn't make the thought that, you know, it it has to be the same width as the bottom, but that's fine, we can change that later. I'm going to press Control T, go to Skewer, and we're going to skew this 13. Oh wait, just go to Skewer, skewer this negative 13, like before, so it's going to be in the exact same angle and move this one up okay so we need to change some things here so first of all we need to make this length same so i'm going to do something like this um go to our front panel and delete that and go to our SUSE right click rationalize type and we can delete that Okay, uh, go back to our front panel and put this one in like that. Okay, sweet. So now that all lines up and we've got something like this. Now this isn't the same text, unfortunately, but that's all what I knew what it looks like. And what is it? this? I'm going to go to my size for my brush do probably one or two, make sure I'm painting with a white brush, go to my SUSE lit text. Fill that in, because that didn't look neat. Okay, so with our red um, text, I need to make some edits like on the E and the D. So I'm going to right click, um, go to rationalize type, and Simply zoom in with my zoom tool. Press M for my rectangle marquee tool. 
and delete those. Okay. So those are deleted, and we have something like this. Sweet. So, with Susa and Red. Alright, so we can merge all this stuff together. And... But before I do that, press just Control J to make up a backup copy and backup. Backup lays, just in case. And this is going to be back text. This is our red one. Right click, go to the blending options. We're going to add in a drop shadow. Drop shadow is going to be something in... Something meaty and nice. Like a 6. Opacity 72. Right click, go to copy lay style. And do the exact same with front panel and Susa by press control J, press control G. And simply group these together. Back up. Layers. Right click, go to paste layer style. So it's going to have the same on the Susa and on the red. Okay. So with the red, I might actually just slightly adjust this one. So I have something like that. Alright. And with the Susa. These need to be merged together. But there is no real way of doing that besides clearing this out, right click, go to Rasterize Layer Style, and you simply just have to take away that drop shadow that occurs from the Layer Style to make it look connected to have that straight line. So there, we have that um, connection, it's all going great and good. So then we need to add in all the other little text, which shouldn't be too hard, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to be on plus fade through because I shouldn't need to show you how to use the text tool I've just shown you. Press T, type. To placing in all the little um, social icons and everything. I've even gone ahead and grabbed up a red logo. Um, just to add in here, just, you know, used a PNG and everything like that. So yeah, so the next step that I'm going to do is add in the lighting above the um, hiss because there is white spotches. There has been lighting added, so what, that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to make a new layer, press B for my brush tool, change the size of it to like... 280. I really need to um, find the shortcut on how to change up a size. I know it's like control scroll or something. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to just make one splotch here. Make my hardness zero and go to here overlay. Now this is going to be just right in front of my character and my opacity is going to be nailed down. Okay, so now I'm going to control click my character. Make my brush size like 100, do a couple splotches here and there for lighting. Okay, go to here, overlay, and opacity. Okay, something like that. Again, I can lighten this guy up a little bit. Okay, so we've got something like that now. Now, we can do a couple of little slight things, like may make a new layer. This is what I love to do for all my banners. It's really subtle, and it's more 2015-ish. So, get like an orange with a transparency. The orange color that I'm going to be using is FFC6C00. Scroll up like this. And change the opacity, of course, a little bit to something like that. And then we can make a new layer and change this one to like a reddish. 
and do the same. You know what? I'm going to go full blown red. And change the opacity, something like this. So it's just like that slight little tint, you could say. Um, it just really does make a difference, see how it lightens that up. You can also just add in one or the other, probably just the orange. I think the red's a little bit overkill. And again, you can change the opacity, something strong, light. Again, very subtle, I make, I may so, I shall say. And yeah, so that's what we're going to do for this tutorial today. That's basically it. Don't forget to add in your own personal little watermark and everything like that. Let's see one thing you could do. Okay, so what you can do as the final um, thing is group all these, name this as backup, press Control J, merge this one together, and we are going to zoom out, press Control J again. Okay, so I'm going to make a uh, like a little box like here, but the feather is going to be 20 pixels. And it's going to be with my rectangular marquee tool. Simply do drag out a box like this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is press Control Shift I, go to Filter, Blur, Gushing Blur, and just blur out all these edges. So it's going to let's be like this, just as a trial. And I'm going to change the opacity on that. So basically what I just did is I made that, then I went to filter blur, glushing blur, and then I changed the opacity for this one. Just so it changes the opacity for that. And it just blurs everything out on the like the edges. So it makes like a very little subtle effect like that. Okay, that's basically it. You can also make a little outline, but the, hey, that's up to you guys. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial. Hopefully you learned something new, and I can inspire you to make more designs like this. If you haven't checked out my previous tutorials and you want to burn some time while also being productive in your graphics design knowledge, make sure you go check out my channel. Thank you so much for watching the video again, and like the video if, if you haven't already, and comment because I love getting back to every single one of you. And yeah, guys, thanks so much. Bye.